In this synergy style practice, I'm guiding people visually through a practice of posture, movement, breathing, and mental control, where the aim is not just to get strength and flexibility, but I'm also promoting blood flow and enhanced dominance of the parasympathetic nervous system. So that way you get lots of energy, but stay very calm at the same time. And I'm doing it in a way which can become a meditative practice. Each of the four main sections in this 12-minute practice has the possibility of being simple with an equal weight bearing on the floor in the shape of a spinal movement, then possibly to make it a one-legged balance or a one-legged resisted balance or a one-legged uh, hamstring stretching posture or leg stretching posture and then possibly an arm balance. So I begin on the second side here. This is a forward bend. I turn at different angles so you can see what I'm doing. So the forward bend here is equal weight on both legs. Now it comes to the toe tip of one leg, so all the weights on the left leg. And then I bend forward and lift up. It's an active movement. But then I do active resisted movement, which has to be from the core. I do this first with the knee bent and then with the knee straight. And then I do the same thing, balancing on my arms. And whenever you're holding one part of the body to another, it's important that you resist. But that resistance has to be from the core. So I don't just pull my arm against my leg. I make the pubic bone push the leg away and the navel pull the arms in the opposite direction. And I breathe into the space between the navel and the pubic bone. Now I begin my second movement, which is a side bending exercise. So I expand the back first, then the front, and I twist toward the right side slightly while lengthening the right side of the body. First, initially, my weight's on both legs, and I'm shifting it back and forth until I come to the left toe tip and then fully take the weight from the right leg. Then I could keep it active, or instead I resist by holding first the knee bent, then the leg straight, and when the leg is straight, I try and compress the thigh, not stretch it, compress it. Then I do the same thing balancing on the leg. Here, I'm twisting my navel to the right. And after doing it, I release with an active movement. And this active movement starts by expanding the back of the body, then twisting to the right and expanding the front. I'm rotating navel and pubic bone away from each other. And then I just complete that movement with a gentle twisting forward bend and back bend, and that resets the spine. These smooth movements between the poses help create flow and energy movement. Now I'm lengthening the right side, expand the back, lengthen the left side, expand the front, and the five stages again. I either keep a side bend where I keep equal weight on both legs, or now keep the weight just on the left leg, and then the possibility of an active movement. You see how I'm pushing my navel to the left, then I resist pushing navel to the left. That can be done with the leg bent, easier. I'll turn sideways so you can see. Or the leg straight. And now I'm compressing my thigh. Push the pubic bone and the hip toward the heel and pull the heel to the pubic bone. And the same thing applies, balancing on one leg. The front leg turns out, back leg turns in. I have to twist the navel to the left to compensate for the left thigh turning inwards. And then I release out of the pose. And it helps to release by just starting with the body twisted to the right and the right thigh turned outwards and then I twist the left and then expand the front of the body and turn the right thigh outwards again lifting it off the floor and now I reset the body once again with forward bend back bend it's good to reset twists by forward bending back bending I expand the abdomen to do that narrow the lower abdomen in Lower back, upper back, chest, abdomen, contract. And now I lead from the core for the third movement, which is in spinal extension, emphasizing back bending. This is a very good movement to release the psoas. I'm lengthening the left side of the body or turning the left thigh in. Now I twist to the left. And here I'm doing a forward bend while lengthening the left side of the body and twisting to the left. Very, very good for the psoas. Very good to release the sacroiliac joint. And I can stay like that or twist further to the right. And here now I'm balancing on the right leg 
while lengthening the back of the body, the left side of the body, twisting to the left and expanding the front. It's an incredibly warming posture without feeling heart racing. Then from here, I keep the back lengthened, pushing the pubic bone forward and the navel up and expand the front. And it's very good to lift the leg off the floor in terms of helping the hip muscle work well, the hip joint work well, but then you can also use that to come into these dancer poses. And then you've noticed my right arm up, I can keep the right arm up and massage my abdomen or use my left elbow to massage the abdomen and keep the right arm extended over my shoulders and come into this one arm planche or mayurasana in yoga. The possibility is to lift either one limb at a time off the floor or all the limbs, but keep the sense of breathing into the abdomen, which in this case is soft, while keeping the right arm or the right side of the body lengthened. And I go back to the easy version once again, which you could all be doing, in fact, easier in the beginning to stay like that. And then a release from that position, coming into a back expanded position, a front expanded position. When I step the left leg back, expand the front, and then I twist over the right leg, expand the back and the front once again, and keeping the back of the body expanded, and then I bring the left leg forward and expand the front and maybe raise the heel up. It's quite a nice balance to do that. And then the second leg, so I'll just face away. So you see, I'm leading from the core. I step back my right leg and expand the back while expanding the whole trunk, and then expand the front and twist to the left. Then I lengthen the right side of the body. This position here now is a really good psoas release. And then I twist again toward the right side, and I move back and forth, shifting the weight from one leg to the left, and then continue that sensation while twisting to the left. So now I've got my navel and left arm twisting to the right, and my pubic bone and right thigh twisting to the left, and I'm just oscillating a little bit with turning in or turning out, and that really pumps the blood through the sacroiliac joint. And then from there, I lead from the core and expand the front of the body, taking the left arm up and right arm down, while taking the right leg back and pubic bone forward. So I'm expanding the front of the body rather than shortening the back in a back bend. Initially, when the leg is off the floor without touching it, that's really good to activate quadratus femoris, which helps pull the head of the femur back into the socket and compensates for a lot of the sitting exercises that people tend to do too much of. And then that feeling of having the left arm up I mimic by coming to hold my right abdomen and massage it, which you can do with one, leg, one arm or two. Two is easier for most people, but if you wish, you can take your elbow into the abdomen like I'm doing now, and then from there put the whole body weight onto the soft abdomen and breathe into the abdomen. And you could do that with either the knees and the head on the floor or one limb off the floor at one time, or like I'm doing, all the limbs off the floor. And it's a fantastic posture to massage the psoas, to massage the internal organs. And it's also a fun one-arm balance, although the balancing part is not that important to get the best effects. And then to release out of the pose, I expand the back of the body, lifting the leg off the floor. And then I expand the front of the body. You'll see when I step back, the front of the body opens up so I'm making this what in China they call a microcosmic orbit around the body. It's a very good way of working with the bundas around the body. Then I bring the body back forward again and raise the heel up. It's quite a nice balance like uh, dancers often do on, um, on point. Now we begin the fourth movement, which is to do with twisting. So we've gone forward bend, side bending, back bend, now twisting. And then from there I lengthen the left side of the body. Shifting the weight from left leg to right leg, where I've got equal weight on both legs. Then I actually, I'm just going to turn sideways so you can see me. I'm um, actually taking the weight fully on the right leg and turning navel and pubic bone to left, and then, and uh, sorry, navel and uh, arm to left and pubic bone and leg to right until I touch. Now, when I touch, now I'm in a forward bend, twisting to the left, lengthen the left side, and I'm trying to do the opposite. I have to try and resist from my core to try and make exactly the opposite movement. I'll try and explain better on the other side. So now I come into uh, active Gomukhasan posture, and then from there I can resist and balance on the arms. And when I'm balancing on the arms, I push my left knee to the left, which means my pubic bone goes to the left, 
and my belly button goes forward and up to expand the head. And I breathe into the space between the navel and the pubic bone. Again, it's offering resistance on the floor. Lifting back up to where I was, and then I do a twisting forward bend, back bend to release. As I come up, I turn the thighs in. When I go down into hip flexion, I turn the thighs out, and that helps stabilize my hips. Now the second side now. First beginning with a twist, belly button to right, pubic bone to left. Possibility of shifting the weight back and forth. And notice, I've twisted to the right, which means my belly button and arm go to the right, pubic bone and knee go to the left. But when I lift up, you see me lift up here in the sideways view, as soon as I touch, I make a smooth, fluid movement of taking my navel and right, left arm down and pull my navel and left arm to the left while pushing my pubic bone and right thigh to the right. So now I actually grab a side bend. So I'm in a right side lengthening. I'm going to try and do a left side lengthening. I'm in a right side twisting. I'm going to try and twist the left. I'm in a forward bend trying to bend backward. So I resist and this all happens from the core while breathing into the core. And then I come into this Gomakasana position. I go down and have the option of taking my left arm on the outside of the right knee and balancing on the floor. My palms are flat, but I'm trying to grip with them. And so always when one part of the body touches another part or the floor, I resist. Here I'm pushing my pubic bone and right thigh to the right while pulling my navel and my chest and abdomen upwards to expand the throat, the chest and the neck. And then I release. And then come back to this uh, cross-armed, expand the back, and expand the front, and then really release out of the posture in a way which brings me back to a balanced position. And I usually end up this sequence by coming to lengthen the body in a few different ways, and I can finish either by doing a static standing meditation, or I can complete with floor poses. This is part of the uh, Synergy Fundamentals practice in its more experienced or advanced form. And so there's lots of scope for going from easy version to hard, the hard version, and you get lots of benefits. What I'm doing now is bringing my body just to sense the energy between the hands. As my hands come closer, it almost feels like I've got a magnet between the hands. I feel the energy. You want to feel energy from your practice. Not a workout, but a work in. More energy after the practice than at the start. <laughs>